Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So recently a subscriber asked me if I had any experience in using the MLA30 loop antenna. Now unfortunately I would not used that antenna before. So thanks to my wonderful monthly patrons I ordered the MLA30. Now apparently there are two versions of the MLA30. There's the regular one and then there's the MLA30+. Plus. Now at the time of ordering, I could not find any resellers that was selling the Plus version. I had also read somewhere on the interweb that manufacturers are now shipping the MLA30 Plus as standard, but I cannot verify or confirm that. Now according to the labels on the MLA30 that I received, it appears to be the non-Plus version, so let's just go with that. So why is the MLA30 loop antenna a popular antenna amongst shortwave listeners? Well, one factor is that it's quite small. It's easy to set up. It's not too intrusive on the eyes, which means you should not get any flack from your neighbors. And also it appears to work well on the lower bands. Now I performed some tests with mine and compared it to my NFED half wave antenna. Now I'll show you some of the comparisons later. The specified frequency range on this is supposed to be between 100 kilohertz and 30 megahertz. Now as the MLA30 is a loop antenna, we'll see a figure eight radiation pattern. Now this means that it becomes directional. Now this has pros and it also has cons, but the pro is that if you hear a noise source, you can turn your MLA30 until you null out the noise. Now the cons of that is that as it's directional, you also have to decide where you want your antenna to be situated so that it's more sensitive in one particular direction. But if you have it installed so you can easily change the orientation, like twist the pole, then that's even better. The loop that came with mine is made from stainless steel but to me, it feels quite flimsy. I had real trouble getting mine to stay in a circle shape, but that may be down to how it's packaged. Maybe it was bent or twisted somehow. Now I'll show you mine still shortly, but I wasn't able to get it perfectly round. I have heard that some users have also changed that flimsy steel wire to a solid copper pipe. I'm not sure if using a copper pipe gives any better performance, but I know that some users have done that. Now this antenna is an active antenna. It's a toroidal magnetic antenna and requires power. The kit comes with a bias T block, which the antenna plugs into. Now this bias T block has a USB connection, so you can plug in the supplied required five volts and you can use a standard USB charger. Just make sure it's capable of something of at least two amps. Now the kit comes with everything shown here, the stainless steel loop, the toroid magnetic box, which has roughly 10 meters of coax, and is terminated with an SMA connector. Now this connector plugs into the BIAS T block. Now also supplied is a short USB cable. This is the power of the BIAS T. You'll need to supply your own PSU as mentioned earlier. And there's also a short SMA patch cable that will go between the BIAS T and your receiver or SDR. So here is the antenna up on a mast. Now I'm using a six meter fiberglass pole with the main unit just tie wrapped to the pole. I then have tie wrapped the top of the loop also to the pole. Try not to pull it too tight or let it too loose, otherwise it will sag or it won't be as round as possible. Now I still wasn't able to make it a perfect circle, but I'm sure with the use of a cross beam, I could have made it a perfect circle. Now the six meter pole is also attached to a three meter steel pole, just to give it some extra height. Now before installing this antenna at this height, I had tried it around two meters off the ground. And while it performs much better high up, it still performed quite well only two meters off the ground. So I'm gonna go through some bands now using SDR Uno and an SDR Plays RSPDX SDR receiver. But the long and short of it, I actually found that this antenna performs a lot better at the lower frequencies from around eight megahertz down. Anything above that was pretty bad compared to the NFED half wave. In fact, I'll go through them now. Grazie a tutti. 
Santo Nicola. Grazie mille. Well, there you go, guys. That's a brief overview of the MLA 30 loop antenna and a quick comparison against my NFED half wave. If you'd like to learn more about the NFED half wave, I made a dedicated video on this, so you can go and learn all about that too if you like. As you can see from the sample receptions, the NFED half wave was mostly stronger on all the bands, but there were a couple of bands where the noise floor was a lot lower on the loop, but the signal strength from the stations were pretty much on par with the NFED half wave. Now until the next video guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.